Hi everyone and thanks for stopping by today to check out this video. My name is Terry from Tidbits and Tinkerings. We are going to be doing the knockout effect in Sure Cuts A Lot today. I'm running the pro version of SCAL, but all of the tools and methods you'll see me do here are the same in the regular version of 4. So what you see on the screen is what we will be designing today. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. The first thing we are going to want to do is insert our text. And for this example, I am going to be using the font called Republica Minor. This is a free font from Defont.com, and I will put a link to the download in the description of this video down below. Um, another font that is good for this method is called Impact, and that font is typically pre-installed on all Windows computers. If you don't have the font and want to use it, I will put a link to that as well but it is not a free font, so you will have to pay for that. Um, when doing this design, you want to choose a font that has bold lettering because you're going to be knocking out part of that text and you still want it to be legible. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, go ahead and click on the text tool over here in the left side toolbar and then click on to your canvas area and start typing your text. I like to use all caps for this method because it helps the text stand out better. Okay, after we have our text, we're gonna go back over here and click our selection tool. And then I'm gonna grab this tool right here. And this lets you size your object. If you just grab and pull, you'll see that you can distort it and, you know, put it however you want it. But what I'm going to do is let me undo all of those. If you hold your shift key on the keyboard while you are dragging, it will maintain the proportions. And if you click shift and alt before you drag, it will keep that in place while letting you resize. Okay, now we need to get our lettering as close as possible without it touching. So in order to do that, you're going to go over here to the right panel, your text panel, and you will change the tracking and the leading. That in most other programs will be letter spacing and line spacing but in sure cuts a lot it's called tracking and leading and also if you want to change the default font that comes up when you start typing which mine was already set to the Republica minor since I had already done this design you can either choose this font selector here or you can go up here and click on library and click the fonts tab at the top and you can go through here and preview all of the different fonts and choose it through that. Okay, so back to the spacing. My tracking, I've already got that set since it was used in the last project I did. I have that set to 97%. This defaults to increments of, I'm wanting to say 5%. So in order to get it to be in between, say, 100% and 95%, you just click in the text box and then type in your percentage, which mine's 97%. And for the leading, we're going to decrease that as well. And this goes in increments of 0.10 inches. So if we end up needing to alter that, we will do the same thing by clicking in the text box there to edit that. And as you can see at point at negative point 90 inches, it is a little too close. So I am going to click into this and make this 
Uh, let me just try negative 0.89 because it's really close to being perfect. And that does it for me. So negative 0.89 inches for the leading. Okay, now the Republica Minor font is a compact font. It looks kind of squatted. So I'm going to grab this handle right here and stretch the height out a little bit. And I like that. The next step is going to be to bring in your image that you're going to want to use for the knockout. I downloaded an image from Google. I'll show that to you. And as you can see, this is not a transparent image. It has a white background. This, so I'm going to need to trace this to only have the dog. So we will go up here and click on Trace. Then we will choose an image. And mine is saved to my desktop. So I'm going to click on that. And since I've already traced this image prior to doing the video, my settings were retained here. So your defaults are going to come in as monochrome for the mode. And the output settings down here, these are at default. So you can play around with these settings, but since mine was a single color image, which is the black I wanted, I just set it to that. And you can play around with the contrast and the smoothness and the detail to get the best result you can as far as tracing and every image is going to be different that's why i'm not going to go into too much detail on this because this is for this image that i am tracing right now these settings you will just have to play around and find out which settings work the best for the image that you are tracing a lot of the times the default settings are spot on if you have a pretty clean outline but a lot of times you do have to mess around with it. Okay, and from this screen here, you can choose to save this image as an SVG file. That'll save it to your computer, so if you want to use it in other projects, you won't have to go back through this tracing. It'll already be saved as an SVG, and you'll just import it, and it'll be ready to go. But for this, I'm going to go ahead and just click OK to put it onto our workspace and our image is right there and I want this to be two different colors so I'm going to select my dog image and go over here to the color palette on the right and I'm going to change the fill color and I'm just going to make it a brown then I'm going to drag this back on top of my text I'm going to hold shift and grab this corner and size this to the size I want it. And this is also going to be depend on your image. You need to place this um, to where you're going to get the most coverage in your letters. And for me, I want the paws and the head area to be pretty well, you know, covered in this. So I'm going to manipulate this to get it exactly where I want the cuts to be. And this, there's a lot of trial and error to come up with what's going to look the best with the image and the text that you're using. But for me, I kind of like this. All right, and now what we do to get the knockout, take your mouse and drag it over both your layers. Go up here to Effects and click Knockout. All right, we have a preview button here. I'm going to click on that. And that is it. That's how you create the knockout effect in Sure Cuts A Lot. Now, one other feature of this tool, the knockout tool, is that you can create a gap between your layers here. So I'm going to put this at point 10 just so it'll be pretty visible and click preview. And what this does is gives us an area around our image so that our two colors aren't touching. And um, 
say you're pressing this onto a white t-shirt, you'll have this little white outline that will show up around your dog image. And it's a pretty neat effect for a lot of the different things that you do with this method. But for this one, I like it without that gap. So I'm going to put that back at zero. And I'm going to click OK. And the last step, which this is optional, you can do this um, if you are creating this to bring into Design Space. <clears throat> this can be done in Design Space after you upload. But I like to do it in shortcuts a lot. That way it's just ready to upload and cut. Since our um, the rescue mom was done as a, te a text layer, we have all these different letters on their own layer. So we want that to be all one layer. So I'm going to click on the folder called Back. And I'm going to go up here to Path and Union. What that does is put all of our text onto a single layer. And that is basically the same thing as Weld in Cricut Design Space. And our dog was a single layer image, so it is only on one layer. Last step will be to export this as an SVG file if you're going to be cutting this um, through Cricut Design Space. So you'll go up here to File and then Export. And you'll see the Save As Type defaults to SVG. And I'm just going to save this to my desktop and call it um, Knockout and click Save. Now in the Export Options dialog that comes up, you want to make sure that you have the check mark there beside, beside Design Space Compatible, and then click OK. Now I will switch over to Design Space, and I've already started a new project. So we're going to click Upload, then Upload Image, and I'm just going to Browse. I have it right here on my desktop, so I'll select that. Here's our image. You'll notice you do not have to clean anything up because we saved this as an SVG file. You'll give your image a name and tag it if you want to and then click Save. Okay, there's our image. I'm going to select it and then click Insert Image. And there we have it. We've got two layers. Everything is in place. When you click Make It, it will sort it into two mats. And you just send it to your machine and cut it out, and you are done. Um, I hope this has helped you learn a new technique. And if you have any questions or if you have any recommendations of other videos that you would like to see, please just post it down in the comments below. I do try to read and respond to everything. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.